Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, The Forces of Evil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this series, we're looking at the forces of evil. Ancient forces, modern forces, forces of the future. Where the evil originated. Why is there evil in this world? We looked at that in the earlier, earlier segments. And we began to look at the methodology used by the forces of evil to promote the evil way in this life. To call people away ultimately from the worship of God himself, which is the ultimate evil. Also, how to swerve that worship into worshiping others along with God. Or how to deny God's existence totally. These are some of the elements uh, that the, we can find within the forces of evil in their attack. In the first area, the first uh, front, frontal attack, that is creating doubts, tashkik. On a general level, what we can find is that satanic forces will come to us in our intentions for prayer, to call us into or to cause us to, to, to do things which are really not from the prayer at all, creating practices which are innovations in the religion. For example, in the area of the doubt, the, the intention, intention for prayer, you know. What happened is in the past that people, children, running into the mosque when the time for prayer coming and starting their prayer without really even knowing what they were doing, a system was developed to try to help them to think about what they're doing before they did it to make sure that they had the correct intention. So children were taught to say certain things prior to the prayer. You know, I make the intention of praying and identifying what prayer, how many units in that prayer, praying behind this imam, facing Mecca, and all these kind of statements were made in order to help that individual fix their intention for that prayer. Later on, people grew up with this, and they continued to do it, and it spread, etc., until it became a standard practice. So you found people before their prayer making special statements. And But this became innovation. This is bid'ah, innovation in the religion. Then, within the prayer itself, because I should mention that the place of the intention is the heart. Prophet ﷺ did not teach us to express one's intention before the prayer. When we're old enough to, and mature enough to know, then when we come to prayer, we make ablution, etc., etc., we know what we're going to do. That knowledge is sufficient. We have it in our hearts, what we're there for, that is sufficient. We don't need to say it. But going on to wudu, to salah itself, before um, wudu, in the wudu itself, which is the ablution, preparing oneself for prayer, Ubay bin Kaab, in a, in a narration, uh, stated, in the, that quoted Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as saying, in the lil wudu i shaytanan, there is for ablution a devil and uh, evil amongst the jinn. Yuqalu lahu al walhan, his name is al walhan, it's the name of the group of these jinn who will come to people whilst they're making wudu. Fattaku wasa wis al ma, so beware of the whisperings related to the water. So what happens is that the person will be making ablution, they're washing their hands, their face, their mouth, and so on. So on. When they reach their feet, for example, they'll wonder, did I do my hair? They'll touch their head, is the hair dry? Dry, it's dry, did I do it or not? It makes them go and do it over again. Or after they wash, they wonder, oh, did I wash the whole part or is there a part left unwashed? Or whatever? You know, and they end up doing it over. And they may end up doing their wudu over and over and over again Worrying about forgetting that they may have forgotten this part or that part or the other part. So, this is one of the ways, of course, if making ablution, preparing for prayer becomes such a problematic thing, then what happens to the person? 
and prayer. How to pray then? It will lead that person to not want to even pray. So the solution for this is just to invite somebody when you have to make ablution to watch you. They can tell you at the end, yes, you did wipe your head. Yes, you, everything was properly washed. Go ahead and pray. Break that. During the Salah itself, Prophet said there's another jinn or class of jinn called Khanzab will come to you and blow on your behind when you're making rukur or prostration to give you the feeling that some air has come out. You know, you've passed wind. Some slight amount has come. You feel it's gurgling in your stomach or whatever. Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't smell anything, you don't hear anything, then continue your prayer. Ignore it. This is the way to overcome it. Ignore it. You know you have wudu. Go ahead and pray. Some people have mistakenly under this, understood this to mean if you pass wind whilst you're praying and you don't smell anything or hear it, just carry on praying. No, it's not the case. If you know you've passed wind, you have to get out of the prayer. Go and wash yourself. Go and make the ablution over again and rejoin the prayer. You can join from where you left off. But the point is that I know some people are embarrassed. Prophet Sallallahu had said, when you leave the prayer, leave with your hand over your nose. You know, as if maybe you've got a nosebleed or whatever, give people that impression. You don't want them, you're embarrassed about your situation, so you leave on that basis. But you have to leave. Maybe you have to go through all the rows and get out, but you must get out. You cannot stay there praying without ablution because prayer is not accepted without ablution. Now, another way in which the satanic forces come in, in sort of in a general way in our lives is that through, through uh, slander and Suadhan, you know, bad thoughts about people, uh, backbiting, spreading gossip. All of this is from the works of Satan, satanic works. So we have to be conscious of it, know the evil of it, know the evil consequences of it, and to beware of it. As Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu jtanibu kathira min al-dhanni. O you who believe, stay away from much suspicion because some of suspicion is in fact sin. And don't spy on each other and don't backbite each other or slander each other. These are clear warnings. Satanic forces feed this area, create havoc amongst people and their families. We know, you know that the satanic forces love to split up ranks, split up people, split up their families, etc., etc. There's a very famous uh, hadith uh, which is um, found in, uh, in Sahih Muslim in which Abu Musa al-Ashari had said, every morning Iblis sends out his troops saying, whoever misguides a Muslim, I will give him a crown to wear. One will say to him, they will come back and report, I remained with so and so until he divorced his wife, created enough doubts amongst him so he ended up divorcing his wife shortly after marrying her. Another will say, I got this person to be bad to his parents and was about, even though he was about to do good for them. And he got another one to drink alcohol, corruption. Satan will say, you're the one, you're doing well. Another will come and say, I stuck with this person until they fornicated, committed fornication. He said, you are the one. And another will come and say, I got stuck with this individual until he murdered somebody else. And he said, you, you are really the one. This is the way in which he operates. Encourages people through, through uh, doubts to commit major sins and major errors. And when we look at the, uh, even the basic uh, sects which broke away from the early days of Islam, we can see that their breaking away came out over doubts. The Khawarij who broke off from the main body of Muslims, they broke off in doubts, questioning whether Ali and Muawiyah were Muslims because 
they resorted to human judgment between them to try to resolve the problems which existed. They said, no, 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 judgment belongs only to Allah. But this is a doubtful thing. They were not sure about this. They really didn't have the knowledge of it. So they made judgments based on a lack of knowledge and that lead, led them into corruption and sin, disobedience of Allah. Also, Prophet ﷺ told us to avoid what is doubtful. He said the halal, the good things are clear and the haram is clear. Between them are doubtful areas. Not known, the truth about it is not known to most people, only the scholars. Whoever avoids a doubtful area has protected his religion and his honor, his or her religion and honor. But whoever falls into those doubtful areas ultimately fall into haram. So it's an area that we need to uh, clearly avoid. We need to clearly avoid it. The doubtful areas. Prophet ﷺ said, Da' ma yaribak ila ma la yaribak. Leave what is doubtful for that which doesn't make you doubtful. The doubtful areas are the areas which are the foundation of sin. It is through the doubtful areas that we fall ultimately into sin. So we are encouraged, <clears throat> we are encouraged to stay as far away from doubtful areas as possible. And we can live a life without them, these doubtful areas. If we have doubt, we think, though it may seem to be good, everybody says it's okay, whatever. If we leave it for the sake of Allah, Allah will give us what is better than it. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْهُ that whoever gives up something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something better. This is the promise of Allah through the Prophet Muhammad So we avoid the doubtful areas, the areas which are not clearly defined. Try to do what is right, stick with what is halal, avoid what is haram, and avoid those doubtful areas. If we do so, we protect our religion and our honor. So what we see is that satanic forces come and play on these doubtful areas, to make these doubtful areas attractive to us, you know, to make it seem, and for one reason or another, make it seem pleasing to us, you know, as Allah describes, you know, to, for the, in the, the, the way in which satanic forces operate, you know, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ وَالنِّسَاءِ You know, that uh, the love of desirable things, these corrupt desirable things, and, uh, and women, and corruption with women, this is something made beautiful to us, it's beautified. And this is the product of Western civilization today. When we open up the media, what do we see? When the television, in the, you know, what we hear on the radio, what we see in the magazines, you know, Every, we're all constantly bombarded with corruption where fornication, adultery is made into stories which are touching. So we feel sorry for somebody who's involved in some acts of adultery and fornication. You know, this is gross. You know, children, in children's movies, we find them you know, with boyfriends and girlfriends promoting this idea. You know, the foundations of corruption are there and much of the media. So we have to be very, very careful, you know. And, as I said, this is because these areas have been made appealing to us. So though we had our doubts about it, it's been made pleasing, so we put aside our doubts. Or those things that are good, you know, satanic forces come and create doubts in them. Whether it is acts of worship, we said, you know, whether it's from zakah, you know, where a person is made to feel, well, you know, the person who needs the zakah, oh, he doesn't really need it. He's, maybe he's faking. Doubts are put in our minds so that we don't end <laughs> Doubts are put in our minds so we don't end up, you know, doing certain good deeds that we should, in fact, be doing. So this is the first battle line, the first frontal attack of the forces of Satan, attacking through the doubts. Human beings fall into sin through doubts. What they're certain of and clear of, it's very unlikely that they're going to fall into sin. 
But what they're doubtful about, you know, you find so many people, they go and they do things which, when they're doubtful and then they come back and they ask people like myself, well, should we have done this? I said, no, you shouldn't have. You know, the lack of knowledge is what led you into it. Better you go and find out, learn your religion, learn the basics so that these doubts cannot come amongst us and cause us to commit sins and acts of disobedience merely because of our lack of knowledge. And merely also because of our desires for pleasurable things. We understand that these pleasurable things, what's behind it, is in fact hell. Not that we cannot enjoy any pleasure. Not that we cannot, you know, enjoy with our families, etc. But it should be in areas which are Islamically correct and prohibit, and not the prohibited areas. So, uh, dear brothers and sisters, I hope this point is very clear that the creating of doubts is the first line of attack. Doubts about God's existence is the greatest possible doubt we could have. Doubts about whether God is unique in his attributes, that there are others who can answer our prayers along with worshiping God. That's the next grave area. Then we have doubts about the pillars of Iman, doubting the angels and their existence and the jinn, or doubting uh, the <clears throat> heaven and hell, the judgment. These kind of doubts creates, in fact, a secular-minded individual. Some of those who are on the way already, you know, um, who have accepted these doubts and now thrown off the coat of religion, you know, becoming liberal thinkers, you know, they have been pushed into that through the doubts, their inability to deal with their doubts. So this, as I said, is a primary area. The second area that we'll be looking at in our coming segment is that of beautifying the desires and sin. We began to talk about it in this section. But this is a very vast section involving many issues. Uh, we'll actually go into them in detail in our coming segment. The beautifying of one's desires. God warns us that these, these pleasurable areas have been made, which are corrupt, have been made attractive to us. But don't allow Satan to draw us into it because ultimately it is evil. As Allah said in the chap sixth chapter, verse 122, In that way, the disbelievers came, were made to see what they were doing as being good. It was made good, made attractive to them. And we said, the belief in the, <clears throat> in the idols, etc. You know, in this way, uh, the idols were see made to seem attractive, that they really worked, the miracles were around them, so people ended up more confirmed in their belief in these idols, when in fact they were beginning to move away from it. So we have to understand satanic force will operate in our lives to create doubts uh, about uh, wrong religion, if we're involved in wrong religion, doubts about our religion if we're involved in good religion, and where we're practicing the religion will create doubts even in these areas. So dear viewers, beware of Satan. You know, as we said in the very beginning, Allah told us <coughs> in Surah Al-Isra, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوًا مُبِينًا Indeed, Satan is for human beings a clear enemy. With that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, The Forces of Evil. We hope that you will continue to follow this program through the next few months. With that, I bid you farewell. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم 
ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب أليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إن إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون وإذا قيل لهم آمنوا كما آمن الناس قالوا أنؤمن كما آمن السفهاء ألا إنهم هم السفهاء ولكن لا يعلمون وإذا لقوا الذين آمنوا قالوا آمنا وإذا خلوا إلى شياطينهم قالوا إن معكم إنما نحن مستهزئون الله يستهزئ بهم ويمدهم في طغيانهم يعمهون أولئك الذين اشتروا الضلالة بالهدى فما ربحت 
تِجَارَتُهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ صم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين يكاد البرق يخطف أبصارهم كلما أضاء لهم مشوا فيه وإذا أظلم عليهم قاموا ولو شاء الله لذهب بسمعهم وأبصارهم إن الله على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الارض فراشا والسماء بناء وانزل من السماء ماء فاخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله اندادا وانتم تعلمون وان 